and welcome to The Daily Runner Show. I'm your host, Claren Ganifke. Regent University is always buzzing with excitement. This past week, we enjoyed watching the Super Bowl, and there were many parties around campus. But the university has enjoyed its own form of the Super Bowl with the recent basketball playoffs. This year's Regent University basketball season has come to a finish. Last Friday night was the championship game between Tidewater and Motion Denied, in which Tidewater came through with the victory. We interviewed some players and staff to give us some closing thoughts on the season and what they expect to see next year. Basically, uh, what it was, we're the outsiders. We're not from the uh, region, so we just wanted to, you know, come out here and obviously the undefeated team. And uh, we know in the championship game, we just want to stop number 11, the best Marcus. And uh, as long as I think as long as we stop him, you know, we'd win the game, and that's what we did. So. We had a pretty good season and uh, look forward to next year and playing everybody again. Well, it was a great season this year. I think uh, more teams, more competition. Uh, actually, the competition was kind of fierce uh, this year. Uh, had some heated games. Dan, what do you think? This year was definitely, it was definitely one of the, I, I would say, one of the best years that we've had so I think next year we're going to have, uh, it's going to be better, we have, you know, real reps for every game next year, so that's going to, that's going to add another element and another profession to the, you know, to the game. This is in real sports, but we got a lot of great players out here, so uh, we want to give them the best uh, resources that, that is possible. I think the gym, Tabernacle Baptist Church works with us well, Dan does a great job uh, just doing our whole intramural program, so I'm appreciative of him as well. Reporting for the Daily Runner Show, I'm Brad Eichner. That's not all. This past Tuesday, Mr. Arroyo continued his Tuesday evening teaching on financial freedom. This teaching has been so successful that the university decided to have a whole week dedicated to financial responsibility. Hey, it's Joe Arroyo again. Dave Ramsey trained and endorsed financial counselor or coach, depending on which side of the table you're sitting on. We are in week four now of our six-week class at our financial independence class at Regent University. Last week, we talked about one of the most foundational tools we have in our belt, and that is the cash flow plan. If you master the cash flow plan, you will win with money. It is the chief tool to be able to beat debt really build wealth and overall more than just beating debt and building wealth is the key tool to having that financial peace in your life so we went over in detail all the cash flow plan is you telling your money where to go instead of wondering where it went so every single month for that month not your ideal cash flow plan or budget do the numbers what's going in what's going out be honest with yourself and then stick to what you put on the paper you can always go back and amend it the next month Tonight we'll be talking about the big topic of debt. What is debt? How does it live? How do we get into so much debt in our, whole, in our lives? And then really most importantly, how do we live a life in America, United States today and not get enslaved in all the bondage of debt that we tend to get into? So the big key that we'll go over is to, again, just be really conscious and aware of what's going on around you have a plan so that when life happens, Visa doesn't pick up your slack and you end up in bondage to Visa. We'll go over that tonight. Next week, we're going to put together action plans for individual uh, couples who are in the class on how to really make their numbers work in the format that we've given. See you next week. In the midst of this economy, struggling to survive, a new concern has surfaced. It's the rising cost of gas prices, and this isn't a new concern. Right as gas prices started to drop, they spiked again. How is this affecting college students and our community? Does it affect the commuters? Can we not get around as much? These questions are answered in this upcoming interview. Gas prices are on the rise again, and a lot of people are not happy about it. We interviewed a few citizens to get their take on the current gas prices. Yes, I'm noticing that with the gas prices there, like from week to week is fluctuating up and down. I feel like it's kind of hard to even work with the budget with being able to decipher if you have enough for this this week or you know from paycheck to paycheck as it's just changing so much. Well, it's, it's absolutely too high. I mean, uh, we're hoping it'll be, you know, uh, I 
more because I'm for summer months because you know I did spray this probably somewhere around five dollars by summer months, you know, so I'm hoping, you know. Um, in the winter it'll be nice to be sometime around maybe around two something, you know, two fifty, two sixty or two seventy five, you know, for a gallon of gas. So keep praying. Um, my commute is about 25 minutes to school and I drive out here about five days out of the week. Um, the gas has gone up probably 40 cents since the new year and I have had to get a job in order to pay for the gas just because I'm out here so much. Um, I have been trying to find ways to not make the trip back always so spending the night at a friend's house a couple days a week just so that I can save on gas or just staying on campus as long as possible so that I don't have to drive back home and, and come back to the area again. And I just hope that it will get better. Reporter for the Daily Run Show, I'm Russ Fulwell. What happens when students only have 48 hours to make a film? Find out this plus more in the upcoming edition of the Daily Runner Show. much for joining us today on the Daily Runner Show. And from all of us here at Regent University, I hope you have a fabulous day.